feels like it's been a really long time since we did a video in Lightroom and I would like to fix that. What is happening people, Donna here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look in Lightroom, brand new update, and they've made a lot of different changes, but we're gonna tackle one today called the color grading panel. Now, this is something that they have replaced the split toning panel with, but there are some exciting new upgrades to it, some more things that you can do with it. So we're gonna go over it, and I'm gonna show you what everything does and how you can use it. So grab a coffee, sit back, and let's get into this. Okay, so we're in the brand new version of Lightroom that came out in October 2020. And on the right hand side in the develop tab, you can see that we've got all our normal things except we've got color grading here below HSL where we would normally see split toning. So once we pop this open, it might look familiar if you're used to color grading in video work. This is just like the color wheels. So we've got our shadows, midtones, and highlights. Before when we had split toning, it was only the shadows and highlights. Now now we've got the midtones, and as you can see, we've got these 360 degree wheels, and that's how we're gonna choose our colors to put in each section of our photo. So the way that these wheels work, and anytime you see wheels like this in a color grading application, from the middle to the outside is going to be saturation. So the further out you go, the more saturated it gets. And you can see it up above where it says the S, I'm now at 100. And then on the outside, if you go around the circle, that's how you're gonna pick your color. And you can see that up above connected to the H, which stands for hue. If we double click, we can zero it out. And then finally, we've got this slider down here that is the luminance. So those are kind of the three main controls of the color wheels or the color grading panel. Hue, saturation, luminance, but a little different than we know from the HSL panel because we are dealing with the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So what we're doing is we're taking a look at the photo or whatever picture we have up and we are only affecting certain parts of it. So if I want to pump a bunch of blue into the shadows, I'll take my shadows color wheel and I'll move the dot down towards the blue. Now you can see it's only affected the shadows, not the highlights, not so much the midtones. There is a bit of a fade going into them and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And if we want to affect the highlights, let's say I wanna put some red into the highlights, I'll drag that over. And likewise, if I want some green in the midtones, now we got some blue, green, red, going from shadows, midtones, and highlights. And then on top of that, if you don't want to affect color, but you'd like to just affect the luminance, meaning kind of the brightness of it, then you can actually use the luminance slider. So if I want my midtones a little bit brighter, I can brighten them up there. Or if I want them darker, I can darken them down. Now, there are a couple of little shortcuts that you can use while you're controlling these. If you hold down the shift button, you'll see it creates this line, and all of a sudden we're only going to be affecting the saturation, so it's not you're not gonna be able to move the hue at all. Now, let's say I wanna change the hue. I can hold Command on a Mac or Control on a PC, and now it creates this line, so I can only affect the hue. And this works, of course, across all three of the color wheels. One extra little thing, if you hold down Option or Alt if you're on a PC, it'll actually move slower so you can get more fine-tuned adjustments. So that's kind of cool. I do admit that I miss the ability to be able to hold Alt and have it automatically, temporarily go to 100% saturation just for picking the color. That was the way that it worked with split toning, but I get why they wouldn't do that here. It just doesn't make as much sense with this setup. Okay, quick pause to make an assumption here. I'm assuming that by the fact that you're here watching this tutorial that you like to learn. And by that fact, it's safe to assume that you will love the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Just in case you don't already know them, Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives like you and millions of others who want to take the next step in their creative journey. While videos like this one are a great way to take in a small bite of something big like editing photos in Lightroom, Skillshare offers organized classes with video lessons and class projects that will take you even further. For example, this class by Tabitha Park is an entire walkthrough of Adobe Lightroom 
Classic CC. So if after this video you wanted to continue your learning in Lightroom, that would be a great option. But also if you wanted to level up on your product photography, portraits, storytelling, graphic design, pretty much anything under the moon, they have thousands of classes so they definitely have you covered. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription and as a member you get unlimited access to all their classes as well as feedback from a community made up of millions. If furthering your learning is something that you're interested in, the first thousand people to click the link in the description are going to get a free trial to the Skillshare Premium membership, so make sure to head down there and satisfy that hunger for learning. Huge thank you to Skillshare for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. One of the cool things about the way that they've set this up is that up at the top here, you can see that we've got the three-way or we can actually see each one individually. And the cool thing about these views is that you can actually do the sliders as well. So for example, if I wanna set my hue here on my shadows and then I can do my saturation, I don't actually have to deal with the wheels because sometimes the wheels can be a little bit finicky. And on the left hand side here, there's actually a place where you can save your colors. So if you have colors that you like to go back to over and over and over again, if you right click on any of these spots, you can hit set this swatch to current color and then it'll save it in that spot and you can use it again and again. So if you've got a specific kind of color palette that you like, you can just keep going back to it and then you can reset them if you want. Another cool thing that you can do with that is you can actually select a hue out of your photo. So if I just drag the eyedropper over to my photo, it's actually going to pick the color from the photo itself. So you can see that's kind of my skin tone. And then if I wanted to save that, I can save it there. So that's my skin tone swatch. Okay, so let's set these. So we've got our shadows on blue, our midtones on green, and our highlights over on red so that we can see them each clearly. Now down at the bottom here, we've got our blending. And what this is doing is it's overlapping our different sections. So it's deciding what is a shadow, a midtone, and a highlight, and it's overlapping them. It's kind of like feathering between them. So if I crank this up all the way, What'll happen is you'll see our mid-tone green, it'll go away almost. Now it's not gone, it is still under there if I pull back the saturation on my shadows and highlights, but what's happening is that when I crank the blending up, they're overlapping so much that it's kind of getting hidden underneath. And this actually gives you the ability to use this like split toning was. If you just want the shadows and highlights, then you can crank your blending all the way up and you can use it like it was. Just make sure that you don't have the midtones doing anything. And if we've got our midtones not doing anything and I use the blending, you can see how they start to meet more in the middle. So it's bringing the shadows and highlights in towards the middle. Now, if I go the other way, what we get are three very distinct sections. So it's overlapping them less, so we get a more distinct blue, green, and red. And then below that, we've got our balance slider. And what this does is it shifts the whole thing over. So if I shift it to the right, we're gonna see that the highlights, what, what we're calling the highlights, the reds, are actually becoming more of the photo. It's almost like we're defining what highlights are as more of the photo. And so if I push it all the way up, you can see that we've still got a little bit of that green and blue on the left-hand side, but it's pushed way over. And then if I go the other way, the shadows are taking over all the way up to the top. Now there is one more view that we can see. So we've got our three-way, we've got our shadows, midtones, and highlights, but then there is also what they call the global control. So you've got one total hue, saturation, luminance control over the entire photo. So if we set all of these back to zero, and how I'm doing that, by the way, is holding Option or Alt, and then it says Reset Highlights, and you're just clicking, or you can click Reset. I could have done it all at once. We're gonna go back over to Global, and now when I choose a color, you can see that it does shadows, midtones, and highlights. So it's affecting the entire thing. I can crank the luminance up for the entire thing or down for the entire thing, we can change the hue of the entire picture. So that could be kind of cool. You could set your white balance that way or you could just adjust the entire tone of the photo. Now, just to kind of demonstrate one more time, if you look over here, you can see we've got a white, a middle gray, and a black. So those should be equivalent to our shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if I grab my shadows and go down to blue, there's lots of black around, but it did turn a little bit blue. If we do the midtones, we're gonna see it turn green. If we got the highlights, we're gonna see it turn red. 
And now if I shift the balance, we get the midtone starting to turn red. If I shift it the other way, it's gonna start to turn more blue. If we do the blending again, we crank that up, we see the midtones start to go ready blue because they're kind of mingling in the middle. And then if we go the other way, we get more distinct colors between the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And if we go to global, of course, everything gets affected. So in essence, what the color grading panel is doing is it's taking a look at the brightness of everything in the image and it's putting colors into those sections of the image. So if we have a photo like this, where we're thinking about how we want to use the color grading panel, we've got some nice bright areas in my eyes and on this side of my cheek, we've got some nice mid-tones on the other side of my cheek, and then we've got some dark areas in the black of my hoodie. So if we started to affect the shadows, let's say we wanted to pump some blue into the shadows, which is pretty common because it will contrast against my skin. Pump a little bit of blue down there, be a little bit more of a greeny blue. And then what it's done is it's affected the skin a little bit. So there are a couple of ways that we can kind of deal with this. We can either shift our balance so that it's not affecting the skin so much. So if I push that over, now the skin is a little bit less. And actually one of the things that I like about the way that they've set this up is that we've got before and after for each wheel. So we've got this little eye here. If I hit that, you can see the before and the after. That's really handy. I love that it's set up for each wheel instead of just globally where you can turn it off up here. So we got a little bit of blue in the shadows there and because we shifted the balance, it's not affecting the skin tone so much. But what we could also do is take the mid-tones and we could pump a little bit of kind of skin color back into it. And like before, what we could do is go into our custom colors and drag this eyedropper over to somewhere with kind of a skin tone. Now it's over exaggerating because it's a little bit more saturated, but I'm gonna pull that saturation back down. And now we can check that out. So just added a little bit more of that kind of orangey skin tone back into the mid-tones. And the highlights I might wanna actually leave on this one. I guess you could do a little bit more of that skin tone in it if you really wanted since the highlight part is actually on my skin, but I think I'll leave that. And then maybe we wanna just touch up our balance just a little bit, cause I think the blue is still touching my skin a little bit too much. And now you can see before and after. Now the reason that you might wanna use the color grading tab is to give your photo and kind of an overall look to it. And sometimes what I use this for is to create complementary colors and to do some color contrast. So what I mean by that is that in this photo here, what we've done is we've taken blue and put it in the shadows to complement the kind of orange skin tones. Now the reason that those are complementary colors is because they're on opposite ends of the wheels. So for example, Orange is kind of over here to the right, blue is down here to the left. On opposite ends of the wheels, we've got these complementary colors that work well together and they're contrasted to each other. So they create a little bit more depth in the photo. So rather than just taking the shadows and making them darker and taking the midtones and making them brighter to pull those apart, we can do that with color as well. That being said, with these color wheels, I could actually do that. So I could bring my midtones up a little bit and bring my shadows down a little bit. So now we have not only color contrast, but we have luminance contrast. So before and after. Now it's important to note that when you're using the color grading panel, it comes in a certain order of these panels in Lightroom. So for example, if I start to shift things in the basic tab, it's actually going to change what the color grading panel sees as shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if we hop back to our color checker here, we've got our highlights, midtones, and shadows. And if I put some colors in there, so we got blue in the shadows, red in the highlights, green in the midtones. So if I start to mess with my exposure, what's gonna happen is we're gonna change what the color grading panel is seeing as the shadows, midtones, and highlights, what part of the photo. 
So when I shift it up like this, if I turn off my color grading panel, you can see that the gray is now no longer a middle gray, it's now a highlight. And so what happens is we get all of that red color on the gray. We've actually got a bunch of green happening in the black here because I've shifted the blacks up into the midtones category. So it's just important to know where it comes in kind of the order of things. So it also comes after the tone curves. And for that reason, I actually suggest doing the color grading panel very last in your color grading process. And the reason for that is because it seems to be the last in the process of everything else that you could have going on. So I would get everything sorted out as far as the contrast that you like, the saturation that you like in all the other panels, and then do the color grading last. Not unlike what I have here on this photo. So I had an entire edit done. You can see that I've done a bunch of things in the basic panel. I've probably got some calibration going on. I've got some stuff going on in the tone curve. And then very last, what I would do is add that color grading because then I know what I'm affecting. And you can somewhat adjust that with the blending and the balance, but it just makes it a lot easier if you know what you're getting into. And then if I was to want to go back and touch some things up, I can, but again, remember that it's going to change what we have in the color grading tab. So that is the brand new color grading panel in the October 2020 release of Lightroom CC as well as Camera Raw. It's really powerful. I'm excited that we've got some new features on top of what we had before from the split toning panel, something that I used all the time. Let me know down in the comments if you've got any ideas for what you might use this for beyond what maybe I mentioned in this video or if you're excited. And on your way down there, hit the like and subscribe button and make sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.